And it is my pleasure to introduce now the Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Thank you, Michael and Adrienne. Thank you, Mayor Savage. Mike, I know recently you announced that you won't be running for another term as Halifax Mayor. So I want to take this opportunity yet again to thank you for your leadership, not only for Halifax, but also as a huge part of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Your leadership, your support for cities, not just in Halifax, but right across the country, has made a huge difference uh, in the lives of Canadians across this country. You've demonstrated every step of the way. You know how important it is to make smart investments in infrastructure, especially if we want to build more housing. And that's exactly what we're here to talk about today. Je suis très heureux d'être ici. Je suis très heureux d'être ici avec le ministre Fraser et avec Darren Fisher, qui est bien sûr notre député local ici dans Dartmouth Coal Harbor. Je suis aussi très heureux de voir les autres membres de notre équipe de la Nouvelle-Écosse, Cody, Lena, Daryl, Andy, Mike, et Jaime. We're, tacking, we're taking the challenge of building more homes faster in this country head on. We're doing this through a multitude of programs and measures. Just behind me, here on True North Crescent, affordable homes were built with investments through our rapid housing initiative, and they're being completed as we speak. In October, Sean was here with Mayor Savage to announce investments through the Housing Accelerator Fund that will fast-track the construction of thousands of homes over the coming years. Building more homes faster. This is how we'll address the shortage of housing options for Canadians. And this is how we'll make it fairer for younger generations who feel like they're falling behind because housing costs are too high. Right across the country, we're making a lot of progress cutting red tape to fast track the construction of hundreds of thousands of homes. But we want to go even faster and further. This is why in budget 2024, we'll invest an additional $400 million in the Housing Accelerator Fund to fast track the construction of even more homes. Dans le budget 2024, on va investir 400 millions de dollars supplémentaires dans le fonds pour accélérer la construction de logements, pour réduire encore plus les délais et la paperasse. Mais si on veut construire mieux et plus vite, il faut aussi investir en infrastructures. C'est pour ça qu'on va lancer le Fonds canadien pour les infrastructures liées au logement. Et pour le Québec, bien sûr, que ce soit pour le logement ou les infrastructures, on va continuer de travailler en partenariat comme on l'a fait avec l'entente historique de 2023 qui va permettre la construction de milliers de nouveaux logements. As I said earlier, and as Mayor Savage has pointed out many times before, if we want to build more homes faster, we also need to be upgrading critical infrastructure, including water and wastewater infrastructure. To do exactly that, we'll launch the Canada Housing Infrastructure Fund with a billion dollars available to be allocated in the short term for municipalities to support needs that will directly create more housing, and five billion dollars for agreements with provinces and territories to support investments in long-term priorities, paired with key provincial and territorial actions to boost housing supply. Today, we're also taking, uh, we're also announcing that municipalities will be required to take action that will directly unlock housing supply where it's needed most if they want to access the long-term predictable funding coming through our forthcoming public transit fund. Sean va avoir plus de détails dans quelques instants, mais ce qu'il faut retenir, c'est qu'on prend les grands moyens pour que les prix des maisons et des condos redeviennent décents en augmentant l'offre des logements rapidement. Today's announcement is part of our larger housing plan, and we'll have even more to say over the coming days. For Canada to succeed, we need everyone to succeed. We're fighting every day to build an economy that helps every generation get ahead, including by taking significant measures to make housing more affordable. Une chance équitable pour chaque génération. 
We're focused on fairness for every generation. Thank you for being here. I'm now very happy to pass it over to my friend, the proud Nova Scotian, the Minister for Housing and Infrastructure and Communities, Sean Fraser. Sean. Trudeau is giving Quebec a special deal on the carbon tax. Kel surprise. So this is what's going on. Trudeau is making taxpayers in every other province pay a higher carbon tax than in, than in Quebec. So are you ready to see the numbers? Because here at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we had a bit of a math day mixed with an arts and crafts day. Are you ready? So the carbon tax in every other province is $80 per ton in Quebec, $57 per ton. $80 per ton for you, $57 per ton in Quebec. So now, what does that mean at the pumps? We got you covered here. You pay 17 cents per liter of gasoline. In Quebec, it's 13 cents per liter of gasoline. Well, what about if you're using diesel? We got you covered. You, outside of Quebec, are paying 21 cents per liter of diesel. And in Quebec, 17 cents per liter of diesel. 21 cents for you, 17 cents in Quebec. Well, what about staying warm? Because we all know the carbon tax makes that more expensive too. Got you covered. Okay, outside of Quebec, you're paying 15 cents per cubic meter of natural gas in carbon tax. In Quebec, 10 cents per liter or 10 cents per cubic meter of natural gas. Okay, so outside of Quebec, you're paying 15 cents per cubic meter of natural gas. In Quebec, it's 10 cents per cubic meter. 15, 10. Ah, these don't look the same, do they? No, they sure don't. But it's getting worse if you live outside Quebec because by 2030, that carbon tax gap is increasing. So in 2030, you'll be paying a carbon tax of $170 per ton, courtesy of the Right Honourable Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in Quebec it'll be around $97 per ton, okay? So 2030, you pay 170, 2030, Quebec will pay $97 a ton. Now, what does that mean at the pumps? Well, the price of gas because of the carbon tax increase in 2030 will be 37 cents a liter. In Quebec, it'll be about 23 cents per liter, the carbon tax on gasoline. 37 cents for you, 23 cents in Quebec, a 14 cent per liter difference in carbon tax, courtesy of Trudeau's carbon tax special deal for Quebec. Now, does that sound fair to you? Of course not. And this proves that the carbon tax for Trudeau was always about politics, not saving the environment. Now, fortunately, here at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we're all about solutions. We like to give the solution. And the solution for Trudeau is very simple. Scrap the carbon tax, so everywhere in Canada, there is no carbon tax to lower heating bills, gas bills, and grocery prices. And if you want to learn more about this and other carbon tax issues, head over to taxpayer.com. And when you're there, sign the petition to scrap the carbon tax. Um, on, the, on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, you mean certainly, you, certainly you tap, certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, left wing, you know, this and that. Right wing, you know. I mean, it's that that type I of ideological never talk about, I never really talk about left but or right. Anyways, a lot I of people don't really believe in that. Okay, a lot of people would would say that you're simply taking a page out of the. Donald Trump uh, Probably, book. Like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... Well, you're um, the one who asked the question, so yeah. I, you must know somebody. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sure there's some out there, but anyways, the, the, point of this, the point of this question is, I mean, why should, why should Canadians trust you with their vote, given, you know... Not not just the sort of ideological inclination in terms of taking the page of Donald Trump's book, but also... What are you also, talking about? What page? What page? Can you give okay. me a page? Give me the page. You keep <laughs> in, saying in terms, that. In terms of tur turning things quite dramatically in terms of, of Trudeau and, and the left wing and all of this, I mean, you, you, you make quite a, you know, it's, it's quite a play that you make on it. So I'm, I'm not just sure. wondering. I don't, under, I don't know what your question okay. is. Then forget that. Why should Canadians trust you with their vote? 
Common sense. Okay. Common sense for, for a change. We're going to make common sense common in this country. We don't have any common sense in the current government. You know, the guy prints $600 billion, grows our money supply by 32% in three years. That's growing the money eight times faster than the economy. No wonder we have the worst infl inflation in four decades. I'm going to cap spending, cut waste, so that we can balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. You'll want to be able to pay your mortgage again. You want to be able to afford rent. Then you have to vote for Pierre Polyev because I'm the only one with a common sense plan that will bring back the buying power of your paycheck. I will never apologize for standing up for an LGDP, uh, LGT, LBT, LGBTQ2 plus.